Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for our session on our resource, Hispanic Life in America. We are at the top of the hour, so let's get started. This session is being recorded, just want to let you know, and we will send a copy to everyone who's registered today. My name is Katherine Bergerson. I am the Vice President of Marketing at NewsBank, and I'll be joined today by my colleague, Jim Draper. In the next 45 minutes, it's our goal to share with you an overview of this rich collection, what it includes, and what really makes Hispanic life in America unique. We'll show you how to search to pinpoint the most relevant information relevant to your area of interest. We'll share ideas about how to build visibility of uh, including ideas to help with your Hispanic Heritage Month programs or assignments with Hispanic Heritage Month coming up in about six weeks. We'll have time to take your questions. You will see there's a gray bar uh, that says questions at the bottom of your screen. You can just type them in there. We'll pause throughout the presentation today and hopefully we'll be able to get to everyone's questions. And if not, we commit to getting back to you uh, in the very near future. So if that sounds good to everyone, let's dive in. I'd like to share just a brief background about NewsBank and who we are. We're a leading news and information provider to public libraries, research institutions, schools, and more. And I'm proud to share with you that this year we are celebrating our company's 50th anniversary. We aggregate news sources from around the world bringing you, your patrons, your faculty, your students, your users with credible vetted information from around the world, much of which is unique to NewsBank. And all of our resources are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week from any device. So the reason we're all here today, of course, is focusing on one of our newest products, Hispanic Life in America to show us around the resource and its incredible content is my colleague, Jim Draper, Executive Vice President of Product Management. Welcome, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Catherine, and thank you, everybody. I'm delighted to join you today to talk about a product that's very dear to my heart, Hispanic Life in America. I'm proud of it for a lot of reasons. Proud of it for a lot of reasons, one of them being that it is so unique. Uh, we had a, a big vision for this product, and I believe we executed on it uh, very effectively, and that's what I want to show you today. Um, there's a reason this product has been very successful. Uh, it's already, even after less than a year in the market, uh, installed in many, many libraries across the United States and even overseas. And there's a reason for this, and that's what I'd like to focus on today by showing you the product giving you a little bit of context about what's inside of it and the tools we've created for users and helping you understand how you can use it for your patrons and your scholars and your students, whoever they may be, to understand the story of Hispanic Americans more effectively. So what I'd like to do is share my screen and I believe I'm doing that now and jump into a very quick PowerPoint. Uh, can everyone see the PowerPoint, Catherine or Parker? We can. I think right now what we're seeing is the, is the interface. Ah, okay. Very good. Sorry. In the wrong place. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh wait. Let's switch, switch back. That's it. Oh. No, it isn't. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay. They both look the same because the front page of both are exactly the same. So what I'd like to cover today are a few uh, details uh, around how the product was built, why we did it that way. And of course, we don't have a huge amount of time today, so I'm not going to go into great context and depth. First, the mission of Hispanic Life in America, it has a real purpose behind it. We had a vision for it. We knew we had the news and primary source assets to build something very unique, and so we did. Uh, most of the story around that, of course, is the content. As you learned from Catherine a moment ago, we are an aggregator of news and in fact, the largest aggregator of news anywhere. We've been collecting news of all kinds for 50 years. And that makes it possible to create, in this case, a very unique offering. I'm gonna jump right in, but first I'll tell you the 
the heart of today's presentation, our discussion is a live demonstration. So I'm gonna show you three slides very quickly, then go right into the product and show you how it works, do a few sample searches and get you comfortable with it. So I said it's unique and I'll even say it's a groundbreaking product. The intention here, and I think we achieved it very nicely, is to tell the entire story of Hispanic Americans from the very beginning. And of course that history goes back a long way to today and even to tomorrow. And to tomorrow, because in this case, we invented an, a new product model. Uh, many, many primary sources here, 50 million individual documents, but it gets refreshed every day. Something you haven't seen before available from publishers or from aggregators or from library researchers and publishers of this type, an entirely new model. Inside Hispanic Life in America, there are 50 million individual primary sources. And as I mentioned, we refresh them every day. And I'll show you how in just a moment. And to give you an example of what you're going to see, we have newspapers, very many newspapers naturally going back in time into the early 18th century, but also other kinds of news, blogs and videos, audios, transcripts, editorials, podcasts, retrospectives, whatever they happen to be. We collect and we provide every kind of these resources. Moreover, we have what I call hyper-local resources because we've been building content sets for so long, we have content coming from nearly every place in the United States and even now across the globe. So wherever you are, whatever your town or your region or your state or your county, there's a very, very good chance that we have extremely deep and unique coverage of Hispanic American life there and reactions to it and related content. Nobody else can build anything like this. And that's the main point I wish to make. It's unique and you're gonna see that in just a moment. So what's inside? What's the matter, the meat of the thing? Oh, well, hundreds, and that's kind of astonishing, hundreds of historical Hispanic American newspapers uh, from the earliest times, meaning the early 18th century, the early 1700s, to the very most recent past. We've been collecting those for decades. Only we have been doing that. Same thing for Latin American newspapers, hundreds of those. I mention them because they are essential for understanding the story of Hispanic Americans because of the migration of Hispanic Americans from somewhere to this place. And very often that somewhere is Latin America. And of course, Hispanic Americans often keep very close ties to the country where they originated or to family there. Hence this whole umbrella of content sources from both the United States and Latin America to tell that story, but also in addition to the historical papers, meaning papers that are no longer being published, over a hundred current Hispanic American news sources, and astonishingly to me, nearly 17,000, that's right, 17,000 other news sources, and I don't mean items, I mean sources from the United States and around the world. And many of these have very deep back files, which means you don't just get the current coverage, but you get coverage of Hispanic Americans that may go back 100, even 200 years, even though the source is still being published. A couple other real important points, more than 9 million content items inside Hispanic life in America are in Spanish. And of course, we're adding more every day. And the other thing that's inside HLA that you'll see in a moment are user tools. We develop new kinds of tools to make it possible for every kind of user whether a very high-end academic or scholar or a younger student or a public library patron, whoever it happens to be, to give them paths to discover the content. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to use a really giant research database. I think we all know this, we've experienced this, so we built something to make that much easier. Why do I believe that your community of users will get benefit from this product? Well. It's an unassailable resource in my judgment for casual study or for deep research, you'll see that. And it is the broadest and deepest and most comprehensive resource ever built by far covering the story of Hispanic Americans. And as such, to my mind, it is emerging and becoming an, and in fact is now in some libraries, a real cornerstone product, getting lots and lots of usage and lots and lots of buzz as they say. It's a great experience for users too. So I'd like to show you why that's the case by moving into the product itself and giving you a little bit of a tour. Okay, I've moved to the product interface. There you go. And you can see it. 
Here is the home page, as we call it. I want to point out one really important thing here. These words here, the experience and impact of Hispanic Americans. Hispanic life in America doesn't just cover politics or government or events that are in all the textbooks and such. It has all of that and more. It also, though, covers the story of the people, the Hispanic Americans themselves, from everyday people to pop stars and sports stars, poets, novelists, theater people, activists of all kinds, scientists, scholars, all of them covered in great detail because the news covered them. And we have that news and we make it really, really available. I want to show you one other thing before I dive in. Here is the tool, which I'll walk you through in great detail, or better detail, I should say, in a moment, that we call suggested searches to help your customers, your users, your patrons navigate this really enormous content set of nearly 50 million items. And I'll show you how this works in just a moment. But first, what I'm going to do is an, an empty search, nothing in the search box, going right to search, to give you a sense of what's inside. Okay, there you are. So I've called up every content item in this database, everything. And you see, there you are, nearly 50 million items. And it grows every day because we add new content. And wow, here's the evidence. I want to show you this right off the bat. September 22, we have advanced copies of many, many publications to keep this product as current as possible. And here you see American History, a very distinguished publication. Same thing, Civil War Times. Hispanic Americans, of course, participated in the Civil War in lots of ways. Here you see coverage that is not yet even widely available. So this is what the current content uh, goes up to, the absolute today and even tomorrow, and we add new content every day. But let's go back in time just for a second. Okay, now you are seeing the very emergence, the very first records in the news of Hispanic Americans in the Americas, not even the United States at that point. Boston, May 15th or May 22nd, 1704. Boston, June 1704. And you can see what this content looks like. These are the original documents. Absolutely original. And of course, they look different from content today. I don't have time to go into a lot of detail to show you this, but uh, I want you to have the sense today that we go that far back covering all the matters from the beginning all the way through yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let me show you as well, since we're on this page, some of the tools that have been built to make it easy for your users to navigate inside the collection. We have, of course, date selectors. You can navigate by oldest, newest, all the usual and customary. But our content at Newsbank Redux is so well tagged that we can identify, is it an audio, a blog, college, university paper, journal, magazine, I could go on and on, newspapers obviously being a majority. Everything carries a descriptor or a tag to make it possible for your customer or user to navigate more successfully among and between the types of content and formats of content of greatest interest. This impresses me a great deal. Source name, this is a navigator to help the user get to the source, perhaps in his own hometown if he wishes to do so. But I wanna point out right now the kinds of material we have here, not available in any other collection, much less in Hispanic life in America. It's, it's very impressive. For example, we have uh, absolutely definitive coverage from uh, the Miami Herald, El Nuevo Herald. Uh, you see here some others, the Latin American Wire. These are representative of the deep back files we have and current content as well for these particular newspapers. And these are just examples. Others are the Atlanta Journal, Cleveland Plain Dealer, uh, Detroit News, Fort Worth Star-Telegram, Houston Chronicle, Sacramento Bee, San Francisco Chronicle, and dozens of others. And these are our deepest back files of current papers, very rich. And I'll open that just for a moment to give you a sense of what that looks like because your users, your customers, your patrons can navigate among and between these content types and sources very successfully using these tools that we have built. So here you see, for example, I can enter the name of the source or the location of interest, my own hometown, if that's what I want to do. And there's a good, strong likelihood coverage will be found. And you can see again here, 17,849 sources. 
Let me just jump to a random page. Here you see the global content, Colombia, CNN International, Qatar, and of course some USA sources, Brazil. There are others from outside the USA. Very, very deep and rich. Here you see Australia. I show that just to give you a sense of how deep the content set is. Nothing else like it. You can search by location and note too. We've got a lot of content from North America, which includes Mexico in this case, for example, South America, even Europe, Asia, and more. Here I think it gets really impressive by language. English, of course, is the dominant language of newspaper publishing in the United States and in some foreign countries as well. Um, Spanish, though, is vital, vital to your user's understanding of this story because so much of that story is told in the Spanish language. Uh, you see here nearly 10 million items uh, in Spanish and, of course, Portuguese and others. The point is a very rich selection of content, very deep, going from the very beginning of the history of Hispanic Americans all the way up to today. One thing I want to point out before I move on, these content sets, whether they involve English language, French language, Portuguese, Spanish, they all search the same way as well. So your user won't get lost. And we've written particular software and editorial scripts to make all of the Spanish content as findable as any content in the English language. So with that, I want to show you the most important thing I want to share with you right now, the most important thing today, and that is the tool we built called Suggested Searches. These are paths to discovery. It can be hard for lots of or certain types of users, unless you're a really, really experienced scholar, it can be tricky to understand how do I start studying, understanding the story of Hispanic Americans. Here's the answer. Let me show you a few examples. What we've done is create a set of what we call suggested searches. They are guided paths created by editors here at Newsbank, expert editors who understand the history of Hispanic Americans, to bring the user straight to a good, strong selection of content covering his or her particular interest, or perhaps suggesting an interest to a student or a user who doesn't really have an idea in mind yet, but knows he or she wants to explore. So here's an example. Under the large theme of Spanish arrival to Texas annexation, meaning the beginning of the story to 1845, we created a category called international affairs, clearly very important thing for the history of Hispanic Americans, and a subject, annexation of Texas. So you see the structure, main topic, related topic, primary topic. So let's have a look. Annexation of Texas, 1845, a very important event in the history of Hispanic Americans. And here you see, it defaults to best match, but you can go newest or oldest. And as it happens in this default, we have asked the machine, we have written a script to focus only on this time period, and that's visible to the user. So he or she can change those parameters and drops the user straight into a very rich and deep content set. Here's 670 results. The user can expand or contract that as he or she wishes to do. And here you see the early examples of this from 1845, 1844, 1844, 1845. And have a look at the variety of papers covered here as I go through quickly. Albany Evening Journal, The Emancipator and Republican, New Hampshire Gazette, the story covered everywhere. So I'll show you a couple more of those just to give you a sense. So let's jump in here, Cuban independence to the Mexican Revolution. Uh, let's look at international affairs again. And you can see here, let's just jump into the Mexican Revolution because it ties nicely with that last example. And again, you see the structure here. We have all kinds of things that can be opened up or closed by the user because we have so many options. So let's jump into Mexican Revolution. We're in the time period of the early 20th century, of course. Here, wow, look at that, 23,389 results just from this time period, just on this single topic, Mexican Revolution. I love this because the customer, the user, your patrons can expand this now or change it to let's say 1970 to 1990 and get reflections and retrospectives on the Mexican Revolution. Here we're dropping the user into a place where he or she can get started and that's the idea. And all of these tools here above, 
are advanced search tools that can be used to create a new search based on the one that we prepared for the user himself or herself. And here you can see all of the navigation tools that I showed you a moment ago stay with the user the entire time. So you can now go to look perhaps at Central American sources or North American sources, or I wanna see what was happening in San Antonio. What did Houston think about this or Buffalo or hundreds and hundreds of others? I hope that gives you a sense of how this can become so hyper-local. And that's of course, especially true for the most current content. So I wanna finish up with the, just a couple more examples because it, it's so important, I think that everyone understand the power of this resource and the power of this tool that we have built here. Let me jump into this very important event, Cuba Missile Crisis. Uh, I'll just take here, civil rights and activism. Uh, naturally for Hispanic Americans, the concept of civil rights is very important. So are immigration and citizenship, particularly important. Here, let me open up civil rights and activism and show you something you might not surpri might surprise you. El Teatro Campesino, the Farm Workers Theater. This example shows, the, again, the power and the breadth of the kind of content that we have available in this collection. Uh, again, you couldn't find this elsewhere and nobody has the kinds of tools or the pads that I'm showing you right now. 824 results from a very narrow time period on this particular event. It's the beginning of a student's or a user's or a casual public library patron's discovery of something brand new that he or she could not see in this format or drill into in this manner until now. Last, I'll show you just one more thing, again, to demonstrate the power of this tool. Ilan Gonzalez, and let's look at this important matter of immigration and citizenship. You can see the extraordinary amount of content we have in the number of paths here. Let's take a look here at nationwide immigration reform protests span eight weeks in multiple major cities. And here again, an example from the more current time period of the richness of the collection, of the types of content we have, of the variety of sources, Houston Chronicle, Star News, uh, Beverly Press here, the morning call from Allentown, Pennsylvania, just about everywhere. And again, all of the tools that follow. And if you're interested in Spanish versus English, you can work through that as well. So that is my story. And that's what I wanted to share with everyone today uh, concerning the product. I'll close my demonstration by opening up this most recent set of suggested searches, because this is the one we keep current all the time, because the story of Hispanic Americans is changing constantly, being refreshed and renewed with new people, uh, new personalities, new events. So as you can see, arts and entertainment, have a look at this just for a moment. Cardi B, look at the names here. These are all hand-created, very nicely crafted searches to help introduce each of these people or concepts to the user or customer. Business, it goes on and on and on. There are in fact hundreds and hundreds of these guided searches here. Just to give you a really good sense of this. I'll close with one very last thing. On the homepage of Hispanic Life in America and it follows the user throughout the experience is a wonderful link. I'll just open it up because I believe many of you may be taking trials of the product and thank you for that. This link takes you to a description that's suitable, not just for librarians, but for users to help orient them to what's inside this product. So I encourage you to take a look at this. It covers some of the main events. It's a good introduction. And it also shows a few search strategies to help users become more successful. So Catherine, that is everything I'm going to show today. I'll hand it off back to you. Wonderful. And I'll mute my microphone. Well, thank you. Don't don't mute it too too quickly. Uh, we do have a few questions. This is a great time okay. to, to pause we'll here. And um, again, just a, a quick reminder, you'll see a gray bar on your screen that says questions. Type them in there. We have a few that have already come in, but but please keep keep sending them in. To begin, um, this, this is actually a great segue from where, where you ended. How were the suggested searches created? 
Very, very good question. We are, we are fortunate in uh, NewsBank to have a, a first-class editorial staff that reviews the news every day and also has a very deep grounding in American history and global history. Uh, they work on a number of products that some of you may be familiar with, including products from our sister company called Redex, where we have expert editors who help to curate the content there. What we did in the case of Hispanic Life in America is bring together this team and set them a new challenge, which was to understand the whole spectrum of Hispanic American history, identify the key events, and we started out by looking at about 450 of those, knowing that we had monitored the curriculum, textbooks, all kinds of places. We created then guided paths for each of these by actually looking at the content and through trial and error, understanding how best to pull out the content, uh, what time period ought to be covered, other parameters that might be necessary, and actually blocking some things where they were getting in the way of the search, actually offering that kind of assistance. So we began with that, and here's what's great. As we were doing that work, we discovered hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more really interesting stories about Hispanic American life that really weren't getting covered anywhere, or at least in a small way. They might have been lost in time, or they had to be found again in these old papers we have and we articulated those as well, brought them to life as suggested searches. So the answer to your question is it's an editorial process. We studied, we wrote, trial and error, then we populated the product. Excellent, thank you. And, 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 and nothing else like it on the market. This is true. Okay, we did a few more questions. Is there a way to save articles for later review? Yes, there is a service inside the product that allows the user, or whoever he may be, to create an account and save articles and go back to that account and open them up again. So yes, absolutely. It's a personal page in that sense. My folder, we call it. Oh, thank you for that. And then we have several questions um, around the interface being in Spanish um, or other languages, and just talk a little bit more about what, what's available in, in Spanish versus English. Yeah, very good. The, uh, the interface itself is built uh, around the English language. It is an English language interface, but the searchability of all the content has been engineered in such a way that the Spanish content uh, and other foreign language, non-English content uh, is interlarded. It mixes very effectively because of the, the design of the search engine so nothing gets lost. Moreover, within the suggested searches tool that I showed you, we built each of those suggested searches in English and in the Spanish language. So even though your user or patron can't see that, it is behind the scenes. So where that was necessary to do, we did it to make sure we picked up the Spanish language content. And when you trial the product or use it, you'll see how that works. There's a very rich population of Spanish into the suggested searches themselves. Uh, back to the initial question, the Spanish content interoperates just like the English language content in all other, uh, all nearly 10 million items in the results, for example, simply fall into the right position based on time and place. Excellent. Thank you, Jim. I, that wraps up the, the questions that we have up to, to this point, but again, um, please keep them coming. We're going to to move on, thank you for those questions today and, and keep them coming keep them in. Now that you know more about this fantastic resource and how to pinpoint that information and, and pass it on to your patrons, your students, et cetera. Um, we know that, that if people don't know about the resource, they're not as likely to use it. So with that, Hispanic Heritage Month, as you know, is about six weeks away. And so this is the perfect time to really talk about this particular resource. So here are the top five ways to build awareness and engage your users. All of these are ready to use. They're in the handout section. A little spoiler alert, uh, you can download, download them right now and customize them for your library. But I'm gonna quickly walk through them with you and, and here's some, some ideas to how to get out the news. Submit it, submit it as a press release to your local community news outlets. Um, use Hispanic Heritage Month as the lead to either introduce or reintroduce this resource to your community. And I recommend 
even submitting it to local TV stations, even if they don't necessarily air cover it like on the air, they're often looking for additional information for their social media feeds, for their community calendar events. So um, I, I recommend not only newspapers, but also submitting it to TV stations and radio stations as well. And you'll see again in the, the handout section, it's, has these five five tips in there you can download it there's a sample press release in there you just fill out the the blanks that are specific to your institution or your uh, library and uh, it's it's good to go additionally these can really also be used as internal announcements so we can with a few tweaks you can make it a great internal announcement to to staff to remind them about the resource Number two, uh, building up your web presence. This is the perfect time to feature Hispanic Life in America on your website's homepage. If you do something like a featured resource of the month or did you know section or what's new, um, or you're building a, a section for your Hispanic Heritage Month programming, add them to all of these areas. Uh, we have a graphic for you to use, product descriptions in both English and Spanish. We have here, as you can, you can see on the screen, we have several examples from customers, including Michigan State University. They are listing us in their ethnic studies program section, Contra Costa in their newspaper section, and we have Durham County Library in their digital resources section. So the more places you can add it, the more likely it is that people can discover it. Number three, all right, say it on social. We have ready to use social media posts and graphics to let people know about this resource, how to access it. Uh, here you can see some examples from customers including Coronado Public Library, Georgetown University, and Nichols State University. They used our graphic and suggested text, but they really made it their own, adding some specific links within their website. They did some call outs um, and really made it their own. We welcome that, that creativity. Ooh, and an uh, extra tip here, add the hashtag Hispanic Heritage Month to your posts and that will really increase your visibility in other feeds that are related to Hispanic Heritage Month. And these also double as really good e-newsletter additions. I call them like newsletter nuggets. So consider using them on both social media and if you do an e-newsletter. Number four, video views. Video is the number one way to engage. We have two brief videos on Hispanic life in America. The first is an overview video. And the second shows you how to begin the searches and some of the more popular features within the product. They're both less than two minutes long, easy to use. You can download them, add links to your website near the product. Um, you can add them to your YouTube channel, put them again in the newsletter, uh, on your social media sites. Oh, and if you are a customer of Niche Academy, we are there too. You can search for Newsbank or Hispanic Life in America in the marketplace, and you can find our videos there and also add them to your academy. Number five, host a hands-on training. So as part of his, your Hispanic Heritage Month programs, consider adding a brief training session like we did today on getting to know Hispanic Life in America. You can invite people into the library. You can host it virtually, similar to what we're doing right now. Um, actually, some of our customers say that they ask their patrons, their students, to bring in their own device, and they will show them how to access the database through the library's website. Um, and that really helps to engage people who are interested in accessing the resource while they're at home or, or remotely. And feel free to use Jim's wonderful demonstration in your uh, presentation. If you're doing a training like that, we will send a recording to you tomorrow for everybody who registered and pull from that if you have ideas or, again, 
take what the resources we have and, and make them your own and make them work for, for your audience and your consumers. Okay, so those are my top five, but I do have a couple of quick bonus ideas. Number one, so as part of your library's Hispanic Heritage Month programming or assignments or collections, perhaps you're hosting a film or a book author or an art exhibit, pull some articles from Hispanic Life in America to help enhance that, uh, that event. You can use it beforehand to give people context about um, the author or the artist, or you can give you know, background or context of the time period that, that's being shared. Many customers tell us that their patrons really like that extra information to help put things in context and, and make it more relevant to, to them. Um, and professors say that they really use the articles, again, to offer that context and a more well-rounded experience. So these are articles to help complement the programs that, that you're already doing. Number two, utilize articles from the database to compare and contrast an issue over time. As Jim showed us, we have such rich historical information. Take an issue like immigration or border issues and pull from an article in, in the 1920s or 40s and show how it's depicted, what the word, you know, what words were used and compare it to today. People of all ages seem to really um, be fascinated with that, with that historical context and how that really helps the past inform the present. And finally, create your own social media posts or newsletter nuggets. Um, look up significant events from your town's history or famous people or even what's trending on TikTok. What do you think is going to resonate with, with your audience? Pull some articles to feature, you share it, and then remind them that they can find more information like this in the Hispanic Life in America resource. Those are my top five with some bonus ideas. Um, so again, these are all in the handout section. Take a look, please download them and make them your own. I'd love to actually hear back from you if you do use these and if you other ideas for engagement, please let me know. We're always looking for, for new strategies and ideas and love to hear how um, our customers and patrons are, are, using, are using the product. So I would like to show you one more thing. Um, well, today these top five are really tailored for Hispanic Heritage Month. You can use these ideas really anytime. Um, we have a resource center. We have them specifically for public libraries, academic libraries, community colleges, K-12 institutions. The Marketing Resource Center has all of this information and links here and even more than, than I mentioned. We have bookmarks, particularly for um, some of our products, including Hispanic Life in America. We have search tips. So please utilize our Marketing Resource Centers for ideas of how to get, get the word out and, and engage your community of users. And you know, if you aren't the communications person at your library, send that, that contact or that person these resources, please. Uh, as a marketing person, I can tell you that we are always open to new ideas, particularly content that's ready to use. So please don't hesitate to, to reach out to your colleagues, share this information, the websites, the handouts, or the recording of the session today. So with that, let's pause again uh, for questions. Let's see. Where do I find the resource center? Thank you, yes. And if you download that, this presentation, uh, the, all, the links to all the resource centers are right there for you. So uh, you don't have to, to navigate around our, our website. Uh, so just download that. And if you have any trouble, 
uh, let me know. I see a, a couple of people just need um, some help with downloading. I'll send them, I'll email them directly to you after this. No problem. Any other questions? Well, Jim, we are right at what, 142? We said about 45 minutes. I think uh, we, we, we've done well. And if people think of questions after this, please send them our way. We are happy to help answer them. I know sometimes you process the information and then later have questions. So we are happy to answer them. Thank you, Catherine, and thank you everybody for joining us today. We wish you great success with Hispanic Life in America and a good celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you. Absolutely, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We hope you found this session valuable and that you have some really actionable ways to reach out to your community of users, your patrons, your students, your faculty with some actionable items right away. As you leave today, you'll see a brief survey. Please let us know how we can improve future sessions and what you thought about today's session. On behalf of the NewsBank team, thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.